right, glad to have our next guest. By the way, we've had her on the program before. It was a while ago. It's been a, quite it's a while. It's been a while. So first things first, no, you may not have her phone number. She is the national director. Uh, I just, for the American, American Truth, Truth Project, uh, I don't know how, what full names we want to use because uh, Muslims want to kill her. So Annie, Annie, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure to be back. Well, we're glad you have the American flag going on there now. So um, uh, that'll be sure to anger some people because that's uh, apparently hate speech now. For, for people who don't know, who didn't see the first interview with you, explain to them really quickly your, your story. You were sold as a child bride at 14 and fled. You were just telling me at 15 right? Yes, I was born and raised in Islamic Republic of Iran, which is 100% Sharia. And I was sold into a marriage by my father, who was a sheikh, which is a step higher than imam, um, when I was close to my 14, and still in my 13, very close to my 14. And I fled the whole country at age 15 to just get away with that oh. you know, adultery that I committed. Yeah, did, so the American dream is what she's trying to yes, get at. Yes, yes, she chased the, the white picket fence and not being sexually accosted by a hairy Islamic terrorist. It's all part <laughs> of the American dream, sweetheart. Um, <laughs> did, you get, did you get a jab in before you left? Did you get a couple? Did you get a couple good shots? Uh, not really. No, okay, I know. No, I, I, I just took off running. Yeah, well... It's, it's, it's one of those situations you don't have time to think about anything but to just... Run. Well, let me ask you this, though, because if you look at Iran back in the 70s, it was much more moderate than it is today. And you see that with a lot of sort of Islamic cultures. I've always talked about this, how you just give it enough time. It seems like they never make it more than 30 years. You have Iran, and now we sort of have seen it with, with Turkey, obviously. It was like everyone pointed to Turkey. They were going over there saying, well, actually, Turkey's a good example. Now, no, not so yeah, much. I ran that along at all with the, with the, uh, the crisis, the uh, hostage yeah, crisis. Yeah, it did, did, didn't go very well for Turkey. So what happened there in Iran? What was the shift? Because, you know, women out there were had... It seemed like they were, you know, they weren't in the full, full, full burqa back then. Well, basically what did happen is in 1979, there was an Islamic revolution. But before that, um, in Iran, we had what's known as, uh, you know, system of, what is it called? Uh, loyalty? No, royalty. Royalty. Ro there yeah. you go. Um, and we had a king. And his biggest mistake actually was that he allowed the practice of Sharia in the country. So it wasn't an Islamic country, but Sharia practice was allowed. Right. And those who practiced Sharia on 79, they actually started a revolution. They brought Khomeini over to take over the country. They basically kicked the king out, turn over, blah, blah, thrown over. I'm, 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 it's a, it's I'm okay, don't worry about it. All, all, all the creeps but, on the internet are love the accent. So the more it's the, just lay it on uh, thick. <laughs> That's a problem I'm trying to get away from Crips. But uh, no, they basically turned the country into full Islamic country. And that's exactly what's happening with Turkey today. Right. Erdogan is trying to make the constitution Islamic. And that's, that's, that's the thing. You give it 30 years, that's a lot. Yeah. Two months, 60 days from the constitution of any country becoming Islamic is enough for the country to go back 1400 years and become the, you know, um, stone age people. Yeah. 60 I, days is enough. That once, yeah, once the constitution becomes Islamic. But I'm saying, yeah, once it, it often takes maybe a decade or two, and then it just seems as yeah. though e e people a, talk a about a, minor a minority of Muslims. It's not a minority of Muslims when it's it's the give unto us a king. You look at what happens, it's because the populace wants to embrace it, even knowing what Sharia is. So that's what's yeah. so disturbing to me. I mean, when you look at Turkey and you go, okay, look at the, the actual percentage of the populace who want to go under Sharia law, who want to see that subversion. That's what worries me. Uh, okay, let, let's talk about this. I, these are questions that, and you can pass, okay? But child bride, so obviously we have to ask some of these questions. You were 50, you left when you were 15. Okay, we've talked about Aisha, Muhammad's wife, was six. Uh, to be fair, they say he consummated when she was nine. We've talked about that in all our Islamic videos. It's not necessarily agreed upon, but let's give it. That's even their most generous argument, nine. I've read, and I don't know if you can quote me uh, scripture here, if it's hadith, that Muhammad, before she was, not, there's no good way to say it, that he would, he would dry hump her thighs. Uh, uh, your thoughts? Let me get my straight face <laughs> Yes. Okay, so that is I true. Can't, I can't do this, but yes, yes. It's not just, okay, it is a hadith. It's also on the sunnah, which is the book written off of Muhammad's daily life that because it is allowed in Islam, and there's actually a verse on fourth surah of Quran about it, that as soon as you think a girl can handle um, 
pressure of sexuality outside of intercourse, you're allowed to do whatever is the pleasure with them. Just do not have intercourse. So this is about so, Muhammad's diary? He's an early Bill Clinton. Yes, He's a, exactly. Ex Start exactly. 36, a dry hump the shit out of some, <laughs> some thighs. <laughs> exactly. And that's actually, that's one of the reasons that women have to cover their entire body. I mean, when a six-year-old girl's leg is all sexy to you, imagine an adult woman walking around showing their legs. That's true. So that's, that's <sighs> why they have to cover it up. Yeah. It's... I mean, we'll talk about the hadith. Let me give you another one that might actually make your day. <laughs> There's a hadith. A woman goes to Muhammad and says, Oh, Prophet, I have made this deal with Allah that if I get pregnant, because she had problem having babies, if I get pregnant, I will... Uh, uh, commit adultery with seven men and now I'm pregnant what do I do Mohammed says step out of my house bear your ankle pass by seven men and you have paid your death her ankle showing to seven men counts as adultery with seven men really uh -huh. why wait well, why was she supposed to commit adultery with seven men what what, what was the reason? Well, she, well she was a non-muslim okay when, when she makes the deal, she makes the deal as a non-Muslim, but then she makes the deal with the law of Muslims. When okay. she does get pregnant, she comes to convert to, to Islam, but she had to pay her debt, Okay. which was seven adultery. That's a weird debt to pay. That's a very weird, I mean, usually, you know, we accept cash. <laughs> Dennis Rodman accepts pot coin. Oh, I guess in Islamic <laughs> culture, we will, uh, we accept the Visa, hey, MasterCard, or sex. ankle. Ankle. <laughs> Well, Islam is all about sex, don't forget. A I, woman was created to satisfy a man. So yeah. what do you do? Well, uh, I guess you show a little ankle when you have to, when the occasion calls for it. Let me ask you this, because we've talked about it and we don't want it to be unfair, and obviously know about this being raised in Iran. Um, people always try and say, well, female circumcision, it's not, a, it's not an Islamic thing, it happens in other countries, and they point to third world countries, uh, particularly in, in, in the African continent. Um, when we were doing research, we brought this up. There's, I think, a website. I think it's Answering Islam or Islamic Questions, question, and, questions and Answers. It's a pro-Islamic site. And their argument was, this was, again, a pro-Islamic moderate site saying uh, when the female uh, part becomes uh, aroused, it is uncomfortable for the man during intercourse. Which to me, Also, just, it may annoy him. It may annoy him. This is what they wrote. Explain to me, is there any actual Quran backing, Muhammad backing to female circumcision? Is it something that is integral to uh, Islam? Yes. No. It is not Islam. It's Sharia. Okay. Within Sharia, now, the, the, very quickly, Islam is Islam, which right. is the book, Quran. Sharia is the combination of the book, Hadith, and Sunnah. So because within Hadith, there is a Hadith where... If a guy comes to Muhammad and say, I fear my daughter is developing her sexual life too early and she's going to bring shame to me. Muhammad allows him to disfigure her genital so she wouldn't have the urge to have a sexual life to bring shame to the family. That okay. hadith does exist. So it's not within Islam. That's a correct argument. However, it is part of Sharia. And Islam cannot exist without Sharia. So automatically, it becomes part of Islam too. But there is absolutely nothing in Quran about it. No. Muhammad was the one who allowed female genital mutilation to start. Let me ask you this really quick. And then it looks like you have a question. Oh, but, no, I'm good. I, was, oh. I found it, it is uh, IslamQA.info. You can find it all there. IslamQA.info. People want to go. Pro-Islamic website. This yep. is not some Christian website. But, you know, this is what their yep. argument. Um, well, let me ask you this, for the sake of argument. Are there any uh, Islamic sort of denominations or, or verticals that do not uh, use, validate, or apply Hadith? Do they, are there any that just take the you know, Quran alone, or is it always relevant? They have to also abide by Hadith. Okay, there are, and those are the ones you know as reformers. Mm -hmm. However, they don't count as Muslim. They don't do Islam. And I'm going to actually give you, if you don't mind, because this argument came up, came up yesterday and I had to cover it. There's actually a verse in Quran, the second surah, verse 11, where it says, and when it's said to them, do not cause corruption on the earth, they will say, we are but reforms. Uh, okay. Allah warned Islam about the reformers. Okay. Those are the ones that don't use Sharia or the Hadith and the Sunnah, 
but however they don't they are not considered an actual muslim within islamic countries what percentage of the global islamic population do they make up uh these people who don't use hadith or the reformers uh 0.00001%. Okay, so one could say that in for for all pragmatic purposes that they are not necessarily Islamic. Let me ask you this. Do you know anyone, any women who've uh, been forced to undergo this procedure? Have you worked with any? Yes. Okay. I had a classmate who suffered from uh, female genital mutilation. I had two rescue cases of uh, women who actually suffered from this. And they, all three of them were from, were from Islamic Republic of Iran, which is said every day that they don't practice this in Iran, but they do. They just don't let it come out. Well, it's also like they say, we have no gays in Iran. And then you have the American liberals who take them at face value. They say, well, they don't practice it in Iran. Do you also think they don't have gays? Well, let's not get carried let's away. <laughs> I don't know why his word is good on one. And then all of a sudden, Ahmadinejad's a little bit murky in his prescriptions. So with the female uh, genital mutilation, it's a lot, they could argue it's allowable, it's not necessarily uh, prescribed, right? It seems like from the Muhammad story, they would, that's, because that's the argument I've heard, it's not a good one to me. I don't think it should be allowable regardless, but that's what they told me. It is absolutely allowed. It is not mandatory. However, okay. it is allowed, just like the child bride. Right. It, if it wasn't allowed, my father couldn't sell me. But because it was allowed, he went ahead and did it. So the tool is given to them. Now, who chooses to use it is up to them. Um, let me ask you this, because we've talked about it before, and now, uh, now we can kind of move on. We've had Manchester, London. I uh, maintain that I think in 2017, the Islamic political ideology, like you're talking about, Sharia, is just not compatible with Western civilization. And, and, and by proxy, that means most, uh, that means any Islamic country, really, at this point, nearly any Islamic country. Again, you just take a few years. Remember, Indonesia was pointed to. Uh, Morocco, was, they were more moderate. Well, they're burning churches in record numbers in Indonesia. It just seems as though it may not sound nice, but we're at a point where we've got iPhones, where we have uh, constitutional freedoms, we have civil rights, and it's just not compatible. Sorry, we have to move on without you. Is that just a white Westerner's view? No, no, that's the reality of it. There is no possible way Sharia can coexist with West. And the main reason for it, number one, under Sharia, you're a slave, not a human. Number two, you cannot consider your wife, your mother, your sister, or your daughter as equal as you. Number three, you don't have control over your life. Every single step of your day is dictated to you by Sharia. Those three is enough to prove the fact that it cannot ever coexist with Western culture. I, I, I believe you're right. Let me ask you this final question, because I find, obviously, your story interesting. Um, but you're also still pretty conservative. So, you know, a lot of people could go really far the other way when they leave Islam and they would become hardcore feminists. Would you consider yourself among that ilk, or are you still just not bothered by the idea that women and men are different and have different roles in marriages as long as it's voluntary? Uh, well... I would call myself a feminist. Sure. However, nowadays, those that you're referring to, they're just crazy nut jobs. <laughs> because, yeah, I, I went to school and I studied biology, and I do realize no matter how, how, how hard I try, I will never be able to lift as much as you can lift, Stephen. This is true, yeah. And based on that, moving forward, I can never be as masculine as you, and I hope you can never look as feminine, feminine as I Have do. Have you seen the face app? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to say that I'm not a stalking Steven every day watching your face stuff. He takes so. Let's say I didn't see all. I of got posts. me a child bride. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so like you know, this is because they're trying to create a moral qu equivalency, right, with Islam, and they say, well, if you look at the Bible, if you look at, let me tell you this. I don't shy away from the fact that as uh, a Christian with my wife. What we have referred to as complementarianism. And what that means is, um, you know, if you look at the Bible, it says, women submit to your husbands, but husbands be good to your wives, treat your women as the best among you. In other words, you're both submitting to each other's needs. It's very clear that it's reciprocal, but it's also very clear that needs are different, right? And that means that for a woman, 
emotionally, being supported, love, affection. And yeah, for a man, it's, it's all the other stuff. It's being supported, uh, the pat in the back. Obviously, sexuality is important to a man. As Christians, we do believe often that a marriage works better when we act as men and women, but it has to be voluntary. In your experience now coming to the West, have you seen anything comparable from even the more fundamentalist Christians to uh, the most basic Muslims in Islamic countries? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a loaded no, question. I actually, here's the thing. To be honest, I'm one of those people. I'm like, don't ever compare Islam with anything. You can't compare it. Like, OK, what you're saying, I understand. And I'm not going to say I'm an expert when it comes to Christianity or any other religion but my own. Sure. But the bottom line is, in Islam, it doesn't say that the woman should submit and the man should support. No, it literally, on again, referring to Quran itself, on the fourth surah of Quran, it just says, if you think your wife is going to disobey you, first warn her, then separate your bed, then beat her until she obeys you. If you're going to imagine she's going to disobey you, you have the right to beat the crap out of her until she tells you she's going to obey you. Yeah. Like, you can't find that anywhere in Bible. Sounds There's just like no First Timothy to me. No, so so I guess a modern Muslim is just a Muslim <laughs> couple with a dual number, uh, sleep number bed. It's, oh, I think you're going to disobey me. <laughs> Separated. No, I beat the hell out of you. Oh, yeah. Um, wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 function if you can get it. Dual zone beds. It's true. There's a market there. There's a market there, there a market. for Muslims automatically separating beds and then just mm. like one of those, one of those, you know, those boxing gloves that comes <laughs> comes out on the spring. Roger Rabbit. Oh, my gosh. We can make a killing selling those in Iran. Uh, Annie, thank you so much for being here. Where's the best place for people to find you? It was a pleasure to be here. They can find me if they're looking for me, me. By myself, they can find me on Facebook. Look up Inaz Cyrus, C-Y-R-U-S. Uh, my Twitter handle is Annie Cyrus. However, you can get my material, my writing, my videos at americantruthproject.org. americantruthproject.org. That's not answer Q&A Islam.info. Make sure that you understand that. Uh -huh. <laughs> we will be back after this to wrap it up. Oh.